Oh, wow, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in the solar system. And hey, everybody, Stargazer Mark here with us as the American Space Museum brings you every Monday backyard astronomy with me, Stargazer Mark. And what I'm looking at through my binoculars is something very worldly. That is the Earth as seen from Saturn. There's the glorious rings of Saturn, 800 million miles away and that's what we look like folks from the cassini spacecraft that is no more while it spent 10 years orbiting saturn and that's our subject today to help you stay curious is seeing gorgeous saturn from your own backyard now you're not going to see it with a pair of binoculars you'll see it because it's just a bright yellowish star in fact the brightest star in looking southeast is jupiter and to its right at about two o'clock is Saturn. But you're not going to see the rings with the uh, binoculars, but with a very inexpensive telescope, you're going to see the rings. And they're going to look something like this. Very, very tiny in most of those inexpensive telescopes. But nonetheless, you still see it there, the tiny little rings. I was showing some people this weekend. A ring's a ring. And uh, though Galileo and 400 years ago, saw Jupiter's moons, he thought that there was kind of ears on the side of Saturn. He couldn't make out the rings. And about 40 years later, they had a telescope that was big enough to distinguish the rings. So looking through any telescope, you're going to see the rings. But I guarantee you somewhere in your community is going to be a stargaze this fall and through the winter as everybody's getting out and looking through telescopes. So be sure and go to a, your local planetarium in a, a star party and get your eyes on a telescope to see these rings for yourself. Because I'm telling you, it is what astronomy is, is the rings of Saturn. We're going to talk about them and look at them up close from that Cassini spacecraft here in just a minute. But as we're looking at a, a photograph that I took through an 8-inch telescope some time ago, you can see the rings. You don't see much detail like you do on Jupiter on the surface uh, cloud tops of, of Saturn. Saturn is just like Jupiter. It is a gigantic ball of hydrogen and helium. But it's further from the sun than Jupiter. Jupiter is about... 600 million miles away and, and Saturn's almost a billion miles away so it gets half the sunlight and the surface is not as active as it is on Jupiter. Now here is Saturn again through a telescope a little bit bigger than the 8 inch one I took uh, but it's clearer seeing and you can see a little more detail there. And this is a photograph from my friend Johnny Horn in Stedman, North Carolina. Hi Johnny. Through his big 14 inch telescope he's Tweak that he, he has a whole system there where he downloads a hundred images of Saturn and then combines them. A computer program throws out the bad ones, combines the good ones, and that's how amateur astronomers are rocking and rolling in their observatories now, taking a lot of pictures and combining them together to get this glorious picture of Saturn's rings, about as good as you can get it from anywhere on Earth. Of course, the Hubble telescope takes us a little closer, but you notice that division in the rings is Cassini's division, named after the astronomer who saw it for the first time. But we're going to see that these rings are more than meets the eye. Forgot to mention that I've got Jessica Galloway here doing our computer engineering for us. Marty's off today, and he'll be back uh, to help you stay curious on our regular shows uh, throughout the week. Hope you're enjoying us on Facebook Live, YouTube, and Twitch. Twitch is a gaming platform that we're on and very successful. And so... Please, we know our own lane. We don't want to be the biggest or the best. We just want to be out there to help you stay curious the best we can. So tell your friends to like us, share us, follow us, subscribe to us. Just watch us every day at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, weekdays, or look at our history of almost 400 episodes of Stay Curious we've done here at the American Space Museum, all to help you stay curious and bridge the space between us. And no better way to bridge the space through space is looking at Saturn and its rings. I never tire of it. In fact, I've said many times, I hope it's the last thing I see on this good old Earth when I leave it is crank me up to an uh, eyepiece Jessica at a telescope and I'll uh, be happy to, to look at that as my last things on there. So 
uh, and this is, is the logo of so many things. Yes, uh, Saturn. Saturn is the logo of what? That's what the space museum. That's right. Our space museum has the Saturn logo in it. So many clubs do. It is what is all about astronomy. But not Saturn's not the only ring world in our solar system. Jupiter has ropey like rings around it. Uranus has uh, uh, some ring sheets around it, and Neptune has some ring particles around it, which begs the question, did the Earth ever have a ring around it? It's conjectured that maybe we did, because we really don't know if these rings of Saturn are old or young. Young being, are they within the last, oh, uh, 300 million years? All right, old would be if they've been there for over a billion years. Maybe they've just been there 30 million years. They could be a planet, not a planet, a moon that got too close to the tidal gravity forces of uh, Saturn and were ripped apart. That's called the Roche limit. Maybe they were debris that didn't coalesce in the beginning of the solar system and been there a long time. We still actually don't know, though we have seen some fantastic close-ups of these uh, rings. And let me take them to you there uh, here in just a minute. How old are the rings? We don't know, but we do know that it are tilted towards us. And as the Earth goes around its orbit every year, 365 days, Saturn takes 30 years to go around the sun one time. So incredibly, Saturn's only made two journeys around the sun in my lifetime of 60 some years. But as we see it in the perspective from Earth, they, as you see in this picture by Johnny Horn, uh, they change in perspective and can actually disappear. And it's about a 17 year uh, about 15 years, 17 years uh, uh, that they go edge on and then they become in the full view, as you see there in this sequence that Johnny Horn took. So the rings are very wide open to us right now and we're seeing them in all their glory, but they're going to start closing up and harder to see. And I remember back in, oh, about 1989, 18, 1990, they were edge on and you couldn't hardly see them at all for about a week. Always changing things in astronomy and always keeping you to look up. There's the Cassini spacecraft that was launched on an uh, Atlas V rocket from Kennedy Space Center, just 10 miles away from where I'm sitting. It headed across uh, uh, its void across and took about six years to get to, to Saturn. Then it orbited for uh, about eight years. And then at the end of its career, its mission, they actually sent Cassini in between Saturn in the rings, all right? The globe of Saturn in the rings went in between there. Very daring, but they said, hey, we've done everything we could science-wise. Let's try something that we didn't anticipate doing and got some just incredible images. Can't tell you enough to go to NASA and their photo gallery of the planets is just incredible. You could waste all kinds of time looking at these images of Saturn like this is a close-up of the globe of Saturn, which is bland compared to the dynamic cloud tops of Jupiter. Why? Because Saturn's almost twice as far away as Jupiter, doesn't get enough as much sun, so there's not as much solar energy churning up whatever's churning up on the uh, Saturn's globe there. But look at the very top there, and that nice ultraviolet blue edge to Saturn there. But these are the rings up close, and they look like, and I can say it now because 10 years ago, people went, what? They look like a phonographic record. But now that vinyl records have come back, everybody knows you put your needle on the middle of that and, and hear the, the great music. But they are so just ripped apart in shreds in a sheet that is so thin you cannot believe it. The rings of Jupiter, the uh, rings of Saturn, I mean, are from end to end about 200,000 miles. That's that we see. And you're going to see they're much bigger here in just a minute of what we don't see with the, the normal eye. Uh, so they're almost from here to the moon in, in, in width, all right, but their thickness is no more than one mile at any particular point of these rings. In fact, most of these rings, particularly these thin ones here, are a quarter mile in thickness, all right? That is a ratio of this sheet of paper thickness 20 miles wide. Incredible, but that is Saturn's rings, the thickness of a sheet of paper 20 miles wide, all right? Very tenuous, 
and wobbling around more than we thought they did and what keeps them in place what clears out these these areas there where there's there's no debris and by the uh, our moons and we're going to see these moons in just a minute saturn has 72 moons the most of any in the solar system but over half of them are less than 10 miles in diameter and we're going to see a few of those in a minute but these rings are made up of particles of ice and rock and rock covered with ice and ice balls some of them are the size of the grains of sand and others are the size of houses all right jumbled up messes like that or the gravity of saturn has separated them out as we see here in this beautiful picture and then here is one of the most incredible photos i'm telling you that i've ever ever seen and this is up here the edge of the rings one of the ring planes and see those shadows there those shadows are from the peaks of these mountains that are lifted off out of the ring plane by a moon orbiting above them. Gravity's lifting them up as Jessica's showing you up close. Isn't that incredible that these rings, moons above the rings, are lifting up the debris by gravity? And think about a magnet and iron filings and how a magnet uh, magnetic field is lifting things up. That's what gravity does in space. And here we are looking at this incredible view. And this is no more than like uh, uh, 100 yards, maybe the size of a football field lifting off of there, uh, off the ring plane there. Just something else. Thank you, Jessica, for showing that up close. There's the rings again, that ring plane. And here is the rings up close looking down and what do we have there in the in the middle we have what is called a shepherd moon about uh oh that moon is less than a mile across but just like gravity and uh, on waves of an ocean all right this is what this moon is doing it is ripping its way across through this sheet of of ice and rock and in its wake you see the shape that's being made there. Isn't that something else? We didn't know this was going on until we put Cassini orbiting. We could not see this even with the Hubble telescope parked uh, 400 miles above the Earth orbiting it. So uh, now we don't have anything else going back to Ju Saturn for a while. Saturn, uh, uh, this mission lasted 10 years, and when it was over, they crashed it into uh, Saturn and had it burn up so that none of the would interfere with any other probes going around or any microbes that were living on that, uh, if possible, on, on the Cassini spacecraft, wouldn't contaminate anything in the future there. And here's another image showing you some of these shepherd moons that keep the rings in place. Another image taken by Cassini from up above, looking down on the rings. It also went behind the rings to give it that this, this wonderful picture here. That once again, that's the Earth, folks, right there. The Earth and the moon and the, the backlit of the rings there. We'll see another picture of that here in just a minute. But uh, quite an amazing system these rings are. And... We don't know if the Earth had a ring system at one time. Is this a common evolution of other uh, solar systems that we're discovering around other stars? We might, when we get the Webb telescope up there, the Webb telescope might show us rings around other close exoplanets orbiting other stars. So who knows? And like I've said many times, this is one of these things that is just crazier than science fiction. And I say all the time, science fact, is more bizarre than you can ever invent science fiction once we get out there and explore with our spacecraft. Here are some of those small moons of Saturn that actually look like uh, ravioli. They're, we call them ravioli moons, pan here. Uh, and uh, this, this outer ring around it is actually accumulating some small particles the size of uh, rocks and rubble that are frozen and gravity attracts them and sticks to them like hoarfrost kind of uh, to stick into metal out there. So just an incredible lot. All this science is out there. There's so much data that has been accumulated by NASA spacecraft that's going to take 10 decades for everyone to not 10 decades, but many decades for everyone to go through and sift through it. Uh, so these astronomers that were working on this Cassini mission are still working on it with the data that was harvested for, for many, for a whole 10 years orbiting. 
And we got to talk a little bit about Jupiter, since Jupiter's in the sky there. Uh, uh, this is an image, an incredible image taken that week before Christmas last year, when Jupiter and Saturn were both in the same eyepiece. Uh, we took some friends of ours uh, here at the museum out, and they saw this with their own eyes. It was so incredible. I've never seen it, Jupiter and Saturn, in one eyepiece together, and that's a photograph that, that somebody took of it. And there is a collage by Derek Demeter, friend of our museum. He's the astronomer at the Sanford Planetarium, the M.O. Bueller Sam, uh, Planetarium in Sanford. Uh, these are two images he took through very good telescopes of Jupiter and Saturn, kind of the, the size they are in, in a ratio because Jupiter is much, much bigger than Saturn. In fact, everything in the solar system can fit inside of Jupiter. Looking at Saturn, through a telescope is just something that you go like, wow. And that's the wow that I love hearing from people. In fact, the other thing I love hearing is say, they say, you've got a, a poster on the, the, the tree over there that we're looking at through the telescope. It looks so unreal, but uh, I guarantee you it is real. But one of the weird things about Saturn's rings, not only are they so thin, like I said, the ratio of a sheet of paper 20 miles thick, all right, is that when we look at them, the rings are just part of a much larger system. Here we have the entire, yeah, make this bigger there, Jessica, because it is just amazing to look back. When Cassini went behind Saturn, the sun is silhouetting it, and we saw the backlit. And this is the ring system that we see through telescopes on Earth. But look at how much wider it is, invisible ring system, if you will, that encompasses a lot more space. And this, like I said, the ring's width is from here to the moon, about 250,000 miles. Well, there you have 500,000 miles from tip to way tip over here. And in buried in there are, are four stars. There's the Earth and the moon at the bottom, Venus and Mars. When you look at this image up close, you can see those worlds from almost a billion miles away where Saturn is. So this, to me, is one of the, the seminal, amazing photographs ever taken by any spacecraft. Uh, the backlighting is, is streaming through those rings. Uh, the, the, right here, this light is reflected off of the rings, reflecting on the backside of Jupiter on its night side there. So, so anyway... Can't get enough of Saturn and its rings, and it's up there for you to view, though you need a pretty good telescope to see it yourself from your own backyard. Uh, go to any planetarium, Google what's happening, any stargazes around your your neck of the woods, and, and there will be some astronomers there just can't wait to show you the rings of Saturn. And as always, we can't wait to talk about astronomy here on Stay Curious at the American Space Museum. And so glad that you joined us today for a little backyard astronomy. I've got my star chart here. I've got my red light so that my eyes that are dilated to the darkness don't contract and I can read with red light does not uh, contract my pupils. So get your red light, get your a, a, a star chart to look up and find out, oh yes, yeah, Saturn is in Capricornus right now. And Jupiter is at the edge of Capricorn there. And then we go from Capricorn into Aquarius. So that's all the little bit of stargazing knowledge there. And we'll be back next Monday with more Backyard Astronomy with me, Stargazer Mark, to bridge the space between us. So join us then.